<coughs> We're live from Cleveland, Pennsylvania. DB, can you see Terry? Nope. Uh, she's, she's there. Asking, there she's she asking if you can see her. I can see her. But she looks frozen. All right, so we began, so we're going to move on. Any technical issues? There's a replay. You can go back and watch it, okay? I want to try to keep this uh, concise here for us. So in terms of the last two weeks, the last four sessions, we've been dealing with line. So if you've gone through eight concepts uh, of line and what I want you to pull from that is that line is design and design is how we tell our stories. Okay. So for us, primarily design, we're, we're managing line to help move the eye to ultimately to trigger an emotion in the person. Okay. Spacing, which we'll get into next week deals with the math that's incorporated in the work. Um, and so spacing can help with storytelling, but it will support it where design is really about the storytelling. Like what is it that you're trying to communicate? And um, you can use design to do that. All right, so today will be our last two concepts online. So the first concept that we're gonna be dealing with is a repeating line. <coughs> And let me mute all. Is this our fourth session? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to mute everyone here. Okay. Continue. And then, okay, so repeating lines, uh, when you have lines that repeat, it does a few things. One, it reveals the intentionality because if it's repeating, then that means that's what the, the artist or the composer wants you to uh, uh, see or feel or, or, or get, okay? Um, so it's done intentionally. It also adds a clarity to your work. So if I was audibly giving you instruction. And I said, get up and go to the left, get up and go to the left, get up and go to the left. You would know what to do. Very, very clear. You get up and go to the left. But if I told you, hey, get up and go to the left or get up and go to the right, get up and go behind the chair, you wouldn't really know what to do and because there's, there's a difference, okay? So having that repetition adds clarity. It also adds stability to the concept or to what you're trying to express. So if you have, let's say you want something that's calm and you put a horizontal in there and it's just a thin horizontal across the page, um, it's there, but if you can multiply that, repeat it, it becomes stronger, okay? It has more stability. So that's what a repeating line is going to give you. It's going to really reveal the intentionality, the clarity, and the stability in a piece, okay? And, and by, by saying in a piece, really what I'm talking about is uh, in that story, okay? Because line is, is design and design is storytelling. So we're going to look at this piece by the great O. Norman Rockwell, Okay. Um, <laughs> this is cool. Um, and we're going to look at repetition in here. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is gray it out. Now, one trick to finding the repetition, if you need help with it, uh, is to first look for the big rectangles. And let me show you what I mean by that. When something is repeating, there's, there's lines that are parallel. Now this is very important that they're parallel because if they're not parallel, um, 
then they're going to converge at some point. So what you're looking for is, is are parallel lines. So you can see here very clearly that there's parallel lines going on in there that forms a rectangle, okay? Um, there are parallel lines in here, both going vertically and uh, horizontally. Now, you don't have to, for your assignment, get into the nuances, like, like not nuances, but get, um, so anal about it, okay? We, we're, we're trying to look for the big masses here, okay? Um, and so what I want you to, to really look at, in this case, you're gonna see these parallel lines that are going across the image here. Uh, obviously, uh, these go down, they keep, there's a lot of vertical thrusts in there. And mm -hmm. same with here, coming down here. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see that there are a couple verticals that are being repeated in here as well as horizontals, okay? Now, what's interesting is the the repetition, you can see repetition of these horizontals coming down in the, in the chair down there, okay? And then you can also create a, a box that's, uh, a rectangle that's moving in, 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 in that kind of direction, okay? Now, once you have that, then you want to basically echo. And I'm going to echo, echo. Um, okay, so what you want to look for is basically your horizontal lines that are coming through here, okay? Now, when you look at that, I always look at the spaces that are created and then especially if there's people in it, if their head's breaking into that space, usually it's communicating what the uh, artist wants you to understand about what they're thinking, okay? So this uh, servant man on this, uh, I'm assuming is a train, okay? He's looking at this little boy, but he's not thinking anything horrible or bad or, 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 or aggressive or anything like that. He's, you know, he's just kind of smiling, right? He's enjoying this moment. It's a very, like, a little, a little, uh, a break for him, if you will. Um, on the side, this is a very peaceful moment for him, okay? Uh, on the side here, you see these verticals coming down through here. So you're repeating, repeating these elements. There's a little line coming through here. And so when we're repeating the lines, it's gonna be very similar to the echoes and, and a lot of the other projects we've done, okay? But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that there's a reason why he's moving the eye up so strong and then across and then back down, okay? down through here. The horizontals are coming through here. Okay. So <clears throat> this man primarily, even though he curves a little bit, he's primarily a, a, a big vertical thrust. Would you guys agree with that? He, he, we're not gonna get into value too much, but he's wearing a very white, outfit which almost blends him into the background and what's interesting is i love how rockwell does it where the man kinds of fate you know he's a good servant you know waiter because he's not present he but he's there right he's kind of lured into the environment he's part of the environment um i remember i had a, a, a waitress probably the best waitress i've ever had 
and we were eating we were at a hamburger place and she was off to the side and I remember her watching us and we were talking and she timed it so perfectly that when you know like every 20 minutes like he stopped talking and it's like that weird little silence boom she was right there right I hate when wait waiters come and they interrupt you in the middle of a conversation. It's like, well, I didn't want water. I'm in the middle of a conversation, right? So, um, <laughs> but she she was like hypersensitive to our tables and she knew when to come and when to go. And you could see her, but she was part of the, 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 the energy of the environment. She knew how to, to flow in and out. It was, it was fascinating. Um, <clears throat> so here with the boy, we can see in his hair, his face, his neck. Now we're not looking for precision in this case. We're just kind of looking for this, this general energy that's moving in that direction, okay? Um, and you can feel it coming up through here. You can see it in the little lines that are going through his um, comic book, which is kind of funny. Um, and so all of this is moving us up into this direction. And in this sea of of, uh, and I like how when we get to his little purse, we go back horizontal. You see how when you're reading it at those nuance levels, it brings in a lot of clarity to the, to the image. The little boy is new to this world. He's, he's the thing that's out, you know, like, this world is so ordered and so formal and so organized. And he's new to it. He's just this little diagonal that, you know, kind of, he doesn't really know his place in it. He's trying to figure it out. And well, he's trying to order food and deal with money and uh, he's trying to make decisions. It's kind of cool. Uh, so let's go here. And you can see now the basic energy of that paint uh, of that painting of that composition when we're dealing with uh, these um, parallel parallel lines. Uh, let me unmute you guys. Take any questions that you have right now. And I'll unmute you all. So Donna, yes. are you there? What are your thoughts? I'm here. I'm here. My thoughts? Yes. Yeah, it's really amazing. The uh, It has that uh, very orderly elegance. And, um, of course, my mind says, oh, it's because, you know, it's a beautiful car, train car, and everyone is dressed so nicely and all of that. But actually, it's in these beautiful, elegant horizontals and um, verticals. And then you have the um, fish out of water, um, the little boy. And uh, it's just perfect. And would you say, D DV, that uh, a, a counterpoint to that fish out of water of the little boy is the round uh, water jug right on the table? Would you say that he kind of balances it out? Or what is the role of that very, you know, beautiful uh, pitcher on the table? Or to, I know it's to get her eye back to the little boy, but I just wanted to know what what are your other beautiful thoughts? Um, it's interesting because the picture is on an angle, right? So it kind of repeats the, the angle of the boy, but it's also really like the enclosure or the arabesque in this image, which is what we were dealing with last time. And when I feel it, when I feel that energy, I, it makes me feel this energy, right? Which is very similar to, the, uh, which is the back of that man's head, okay? Uh, let me erase all these lines because we've already got these points. You, you know, DV, I would have been looking at this picture for a whole year and I wouldn't have seen it and yet it's right in front of me. That's something. And then you have this angle, which is this angle, okay? Um, you have this gentle little curve which is coming through here, which probably mimics through his eyes, okay? So this, to me, that, that water picture is this man. A lot of times when you see pictures in, in uh, uh, let's say, Christian art, 
it's a symbol of a person who's being filled or who's pouring into someone else. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's kind of what this picture is, is moving into. It's like, I like how this little steam comes through here and it breaks into this little boy space, you know? Um, so now I'm not, uh, I, I don't know if that was, you know, just a picture that was laying around or whatever, but uh, I do look at the design of it and the design mimics this fella, you know, almost to a T. I mean, it even looks the same size and stuff. So it's interesting. Um, okay, so let's go on. <clears throat> Anybody else have any other questions on the parallel lines? I do. I have a question. Like, um, you did not do the windows. Was it because they were interrupted by the bodies so much that even though we know they're um, rectangles? You, you could. I mean, you know, you have these verticals coming down through here, which is being repeated. Um, you got the, the horizontals. You got all of these horizontals in the city. You know, which is this little man-made city back there, you know. It's just the whole point of it, this whole entire piece is that the entire piece is verticals and horizontals to really, really, really show you that it's a stable, constructed, intentional environment. And this little boy breaks that energy because he's the little diagonal in it. Okay, he's the he he hasn't fallen in line yet. <laughs> Okay, and um, <clears throat> and so yeah, that's what I uh, you know. So I, I I just left it out, but it falls in the same 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 feel as the rest of the uh, the rest of the composition. Right. Victor, do yeah. you think that the uh, triangle napkin on the right side of the table was? done to sort of uh, repeat the diagonal of the tablecloth fold down there? Or why, do you think there was a reason to put in that little triangle shaped napkin on the table next to the pot? Uh, there's a reason for everything. These guys don't do things without having reason for it. Yeah. But that's just, that's all. Once, once you get into the grid work, Mm -hmm. uh, in the academy, you'll understand why okay. these things are important. Okay. And just, actually, next week you'll you'll understand it even more because we'll get into gamut. But um, but yeah, that's what we're really looking at. Um, <clears throat> so right now, Don the Victor, last four got, weeks, Sorry, Don Victor. I got a question here. Yeah. Uh, how does it differ from uh, echoing the horizontal and verticals which we did before? Like you know, echoing that's, the it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. It's just because this is horizontal and verticals, and you did that in a thrust map and an echo map. Mm -hmm. It's it's the same thing. Right. Um, but what I'm trying to share with you is that those were just done randomly. You felt it. You know. You saw the horizontal. You saw the diagonal. You're you're just repeating what you saw. Here, you're looking now for parallel lines. And the parallel lines could be verticals, they could be horizontals, they can be an array of diagonals. Mm -hmm. And the difference right now is that you're looking for parallel lines to help to, to understand what the artist is reinforcing. Okay, so the exercise of the thrust map is just a way to kind of help you begin to scan an image and start pulling out information. Mm. And, and let me just also add, Don Victor, the way you started, because I like to take notes. Um, you said it so beautifully. Um, line is how is the design, and it's through line that we tell the story and help to trigger emotions. So I think Don Victor is trying to show you how this repetition of horizontals and verticals mostly are um, evoking an emotion of stability and everything is very traditional and calm. And then the diagonal lines in the little boy break that energy and have a different energy. Do you agree? Yeah. And, and that's, the purpose, of, that's uh, the purpose of this kind of lesson to help us understand 
how we are creating the music. Hmm. Got it, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, the diagonal would be the dominant diagonal in the piece, you know. Um, and, and so we're, we're, we're not just looking for the, what's there, but we're now focusing. What I'm trying to show you guys is how to see and then read, right? You need to find it. You need to reveal it first and then read it or interpret it, okay? What, the problem with people when they say, oh, it's open to interpretation. Your artwork's open to interpretation. Well, no, it's not, unless you didn't plan it. But if you plan it, these guys would be pissed off if you came and, and sat in front of their artwork and started mouthing off nonsense that had absolutely nothing to do with they put their hard work into composing, right? So, but you can't read it intelligently until you're able to actually see it. So you have to reveal the design. Then you can interpret it because it's going to give you the boundaries and the directions and the, and the intensities and things that you need um, to know what the artist is, uh, what, what the artist is communicating. Um, in terms of the diagonals, uh, so far you guys have really just been focusing more intuitively, feeling things and then drawing and pulling them out. Um, when Jen asked about these diagonals and the triangles, next week we'll get into actually seeing how intentional each of the angles are. Okay. Um, and so as we go through this process, it's moving from this intent, intuitive feeling, giving you simple marks to figure it out. And, that, and then you, you start to really see how intentional all of this really is. Okay. That comes next week. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, let's move on. I love the iPhone 7 on the table. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. It does look like it, right? Yeah, it does. Wait, what's that? What it looks that? like an iPhone 7 on the table. Yes, it does. It does. I was like, oh, he... cell phone. Yeah, I... exactly. You know, it's funny. There's this painting by Norman Rockwell where these guys are looking at this, this grandmother and a kid and they're in this little restaurant and they're saying grace, right? And I remember I walked into this pizza place and they're all leaning over like this, you know, in the painting and they're all saying grace. And I walked into this pizza place and I saw this table and they were all leaning over like that. I was like, oh, look at that. How beautiful. It's like a family saying grace, just like a Norman Rockwell painting. And then I look closer and they're all like texting, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, High point of contrast right there. This is about the boy paying the bill. Okay. So that's why that that's positioned there. Mm -hmm. But we'll get that in we'll get to that in two weeks from now. All right, guys, let's move on. <clears throat> now radiating lines. Uh what the radiating line reveals. What should we reveal it? It's going to reveal something that's important, okay? It also adds to the image speed and intensity, okay? So now how does it do that? Um, first of all, what is a radiating line? Let me, let me draw a little diagram for you. If I have a point and I radiate from it, lines out, that becomes a radiating point, okay? Now, conversely, I could actually extend lines to a point, okay? So now in this case, if I'm extending it to a point, your, your eye has all this space, all this gap, but as it gets closer to that point, it begins to speed up and become much more dense or intense. Okay, so you're adding, you're, 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 mm. you're taking this 
this space and you're compressing it into a point. And so that's adding speed and intensity to, to whatever it is that's considered important in that image. Okay. Now it could also come this way. So maybe like, you know, a painting of Jesus or something might, it might have this light or, or the environment designed in such a way that it's radiating from him, you know, um, sometimes you'll see that kind of uh, thing used that something's radiating out of or things are being drawn to okay so let's look at an example oh uh, i like how depressed the dog is it's like what, what, what the hell's going on <laughs> <laughs> i lost my best friend um <laughs> this is like a traditional famous uh mama rockwell painting so we gray it out. <laughs> and we want to, what's neat about uh, finding the, um, the radiating lines, a lot of times you'll be able to feel it because it leads to a triangle, it creates a triangle, okay? Um, and so let's, let's do this in white. So sometimes what you'll just do is you kind of just start and you want to find where these lines converge. Everything's coming to his little part for some reason. And then what happens is once you extend it from there, you can you know, you get that, you find that little point and all of a sudden you start to see like how everything is actually designed to that little point. And so if you're sketching and you have a little, there's a little point in your image, it's very important. You can just quickly take that little sketch and start radiating points to it. And now you can quickly morph your sketch to have the lines that all, all automatically like start pulling you towards a certain point. Okay. So that's, that'll be your radiating uh, point. So it creates this triangle cone uh, and that moves your eye. All right. Questions? I didn't think you were going to have any. That's pretty straightforward. So let's get into. Um, oh, wait a second. Okay, well, maybe I can do it this way. There we go. And then there's the energy of that piece, okay? A part of the energy of that piece. Huh. That's kind of interesting. Shooting star. Huh? Shooting star. Ex yeah. Excuse me, Don Victor. Yeah. Do you believe he made it very asymmetri asymmetrical so that it would be dynamic instead of being too, too balanced or too quiet or too staid? You know, he could have. Like my first thought was, oh, I bet it might lead all up to right where their heads join. And he didn't. He kept it to the one side. Now, why, very would, why would he? You know the answer to your question. Yes. No, I wanted to hear you say it because I don't want to assume I know anything. So let me, I say yes, it's intentional. But now I want you to look at the image and interpret because of the design tells us you would naturally oh. think. Oh, I think I got it. About these two people. So yeah. it's not. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. The story is also about how the puppy right beneath him is now feeling love loss. Okay. So if that's the case, because we'll, we could say the dominant vertical in this image goes through the boy, through the puppy. Will we all agree right. on that? Okay. So this image is not necessarily about the little girl. Right. It, 
It could be about the doggy. And, no, it's about the boy. It's about it's about the boy. This, it's this about the boy and his love. It's not a girl's yeah. experience. Now, isn't he supporting her? He's well, he's supporting supporting her. He's the he's the yeah. main support. He's the main support. She's leaning onto him. Now that's part of the culture, you know that that this was painted in. I mean, today this would be considered, you know, anti-woman and whatever. But um, oh well. I'll take uh, it. <laughs> and he gave so, her some flowers. What was that? He gave us some flowers. Yeah. So this is about a puppy love, right? This is about a little boy's first love. You know, it's not about the little girl. It's about the boy and how, mm -hmm. you know, I don't even want to say because we're going to be on camera, but, um, but this will be repeated many times throughout this boy's life. You know, he'll have a friend and, you know, the girl comes into the picture and all of a sudden the friend's not there no more. You know, those kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, this is, you know, obviously Rockwell's a guy and he's, he's, he's expressing this concept through a, a little boy's perspective, not a little girl's perspective. I'm not saying that he didn't have the skills to do that, but that's not what the image is about. Now, people would argue me, argue with me on that, but the design supports that, that thesis. Mm -hmm. It's very, very clear once you look at the design, what the intention of the composer was. Is the puppy there is sort of reference to puppy love? No, when you're looking at the puppy, you got to be careful because you don't want to subscribe too many things to the to the representation. Okay. Because when you get into symbolism, which isn't bad, but at the academy we try to stay away from that. Okay, okay? we want to really, really articulate what's going on in the image through the design. Okay. With the energy. So the thing about Rockwell is a lot of times he he incorporated puppies into his artwork one because puppies sell and he's an illustrator and he's trying to sell covers and um, puppies and kids sell. Okay. Really well. okay. Don't overthink the puppy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and the, and the puppy is just part of, you know, the, a boy's first friendship, you know, I mean, it's, it's just part of that relationship. I'm kind of confused by that line. Is that a ball on the end of it? Uh, yeah, at the bottom there. Yeah. Yeah, he probably was. Is that just to pull you into the picture? <laughs> Is that to just lead you into the picture through the puppy, or? Uh, it's probably designed so that when your arm, when your eye comes down through this radiating I see. point, I see, and then this curves through, this catches the eye and brings it back up. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dee I'm going to mute because it's such a storm here. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so let's get into some demos. Oh, wow, that was... So this is going to be a good one. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take a look at <clears throat> some, uh, take a look at this image. So who... Give me two two volunteers. Somebody raise your hand or I'm gonna call on you. Oh. I'll do. All right, cool. Jen and Susan. Susan, meet Jen. Jen, meet Susan. You guys Hi. will be in class later tonight. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Um, so, Susan, which repeating line would you like to tackle? Um, well, the one I don't see is the triangle thing, the radiating, or is that not, that's not it. <laughs> that's the wrong answer. Okay. Uh, okay. With the repeating line. The so. only thing I see is the verticals, the up and down on. The All right, we'll tackle that one then. Jen? Yes. Which, which ones are you going to tackle? The diagonals, the horizontal. All right, sounds good. Okay. <laughs> so what I want you to do is get your annotation tools. All right. And just start repeating that energy. <clears throat> Okay. 
how do we get the tools again? Like up, up here? Yeah, at the top under options. Uh, view options. under view options? Annotate. And annotate. Okay. And uh, use white. That'll be under your format. And probably use, uh, there's usually like four options of weight. Use okay. a second or a third one. And okay. under the draw tool, use your straight line tool, not your curve tool. Okay. 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 Oh, wait a second. Wait a second, guys. I forgot. There we are. Okay. Bring it out. Very good. Okay. You can go through the brush, you, you, you know, you don't have to stop there. Okay. So go through the arms. You got real straight. Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, well then, well that, then you're just looking at the planks. And it's really not just the planks. It's that it's, what you're looking to do is to create a section and then repeat in that section that line. Um, you know, and so the line, those verticals run right through those boys. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Like that? Actually, the verticals go further down. You're, you're, you're just going to the edge of that diagonal, but they go further down than that. All the way down to the bottom? Yep. Well, not to the bottom of the page, but to the bottom of the feet. So that's why I said look for that rectangle that they're in. Now, again, those two horizontals I want you to take out because um, I'll, I'll take them out for you. Yeah, also a vertical over that uh, okay. barrel was an accident. No, that, that that's that's correct. Oh well, um, I added it. She didn't. No. <laughs> okay. So what I what I wanted you to find were the horizontals in here. Now, Jen, I'm gonna. I mean, uh, uh, Susan, I'm gonna remove your verticals out of here. Okay. Oh, okay. So inside this box, inside this red box. Is really where your he's let's say we're going to call them horizontals, even though they're a slight diagonal. Okay. I see, I see, I see. Um, in here, we're going to say this section here is where these verticals are. Okay? Right. Okay. And so what you're starting, you know, what I want you to see is that there's actually it's starting to break things up into spaces. I see. <laughs> okay. And think about the repeating lines in a sense as setting the, if these are the characters on a stage, it's kind of setting the stage. Okay, what's the overall energy in, in a certain area? Now, let me ask you, Susan, those verticals, why are they important to the feeling of this? Oops. Um, I think they, I'm sorry, I drew that line wrong and I need to erase it. Um, what I get is concentration, mm -hmm. you know, like making it very perfect. Yep. And so that repetition of those lines adds that exactness to it. Yep, exactly. It adds that repetition, that exactness. It also allows us to feel that up and down feeling that they have to do. That it, you know, these aren't short, little verticals. They're long and they're wide, and so you really feel the the eye. Like tr make your eye, and I want everybody to do this. Not only your eye, but your head, so you can really feel it. To go from the top of this vertical down and then back up, and then down, and then back up, and then down, and then back up. I mean, this is Miyagi-san, you know, paint the fence. <laughs> okay? So your eye, your mind is picking all of this up. When you become sensitive to it, now you're really feeling the painting. Now, the horizontal area block What's the purpose of it? Because it serves a purpose. 
to count to uh, counter or to compare to give you a stability and calmness compared to the focus mm -hmm. and the focus and the intensity of the voice painting. Sure. I like that. Um, it also, what it also will do is since we start reading from left to right, from top left, bottom right, it brings us into that area very, very quickly, okay? Um, if it didn't, if it wasn't there, then because of all of the strong verticals, our eye would shoot down this, this alley, this gutter here, this column, and we would start down here at their feet. But because of all these horizontal uh, thrusts, we're pushed into the top part of this image. Okay, boom. Also one reason why he's using this dark contrast here to hold our eye up there so it doesn't get trapped or moved down into this bottom part. So it holds us, pushes us, and it makes us start here. Mm -hmm. Which, so why? So then we can then feel that these kids are working for a while now. Um, very cool. So uh, what I want to do is show the energy. This is a cool change of charge as well. Yeah. Now the primary change of charge, just like in our first example, will be seen with the diagonals coming in. There. So we're going to use the same image for the radiating lines. Now, this is a tricky one. So who can I pick on? I, I, I would like to see. Yes, you're smiling there, Julie. You're going to jump on in this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, this is a tricky one. Um, so where do the radiating lines bring us to or, 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 or come from? I think they come out of here. I'm going to say no, and that's why it's tricky. Okay, I fell in that. <laughs> that's what I would have said. That's what I would have said. Me too. <laughs> um, and I could be wrong. Possibly another set coming down out of here. It doesn't work so neatly, no. I would say his one of their eyeballs, but it wouldn't be that because it goes so, straight through there. Oops, hold on. There's the air, there's the perspective, the radiating lines on the perspective. But Terry, where would you say that the lines are converging at? Um, I, I can't draw because I'm on my cell phone. Okay. But, uh, my, my guess would be on the hand because the there it the, is. the of the hair, the finger, top finger. Yep. Oh, okay. There it is. Uh, it's all no. in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. <laughs> oh. Mm. Right. You can imagine this little boy telling his friend, you know, if you're going to help me, you got to do it like this. You got to hold it out. It's all in the wrist. So. <laughs> yeah. And that's why it's a little yeah. tricky because you you naturally assume it'd be the tip of that brush, but if you look at the tip of the brush, it yeah. fades away in terms of its value. So the tip of the brush isn't even important. Mm -hmm. So they're uh, radiating down, radiating down through those boys' bodies. Yeah. Okay. 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 Bring in probably about, about maybe about another five. Yeah. There we are.
and you'll see it in the, in the cuff. Um, let me change my color so I can add some in here. A little finicky. Um, and you could have, you know, I always say if you had a, if you walked into a wall, a, a room and there's a huge wall and the huge wall had this huge painting of food on it, right? There's this big table of like, you know, all kinds of, like a big feast, just huge table, maybe from a top view, and it's just covered in food. And in that huge mural that's 10 feet high and 30 feet long, there's a fly, a fly that lands on the pie or something, right? If you know how to design, especially using this strategy, everybody will see that fly. Mm, interesting. Fun. Okay. Yeah. You bring in a couple other strategies too, like where you place the fly, repetition of lines, repeating lines, your thrust map, all of that can converge where the fly is, your dominant contrast and fly, you know. So you want to bring in all these other tools that brings everything to that little fly. <clears throat> And that's when you're composing art that's very dynamic. And when you can read it and find those things, then, then, the, then the experience becomes very dynamic. Yeah, there you go. Brilliant. Now, if I was designing this piece, and maybe Norman did this already, from the wrist, then I would radiate out from it. And maybe the, uh, the sill, like the... Um, and I'm not saying he did this because those lines are not adding up very well. Um, well maybe they actually are. You look at the, uh, uh, this is like the Mondrian painting. Mm -hmm. See how, it, you know, could these things, oh yeah, maybe he did do it, cool. Okay. Also, I like that in terms of an arabesque, we're having that repetition coming through. Okay. <clears throat> really feel that brush strip. This is why I wrote on my Facebook uh, yesterday that to be a great artist, I think you need to be a great director or an actor. And something that may be of interest is taking an improv class. Um, because learning to, learning to do that, it, it, it's a skill that allows you to kind of fall in, into expressing yourself differently than you normally would. and expressing different kinds of energy, you know? What is it if you want it to be aggressive in an image or very passive in an image? It's like an actor taking on a whole other character, another personality, another persona, another spirit, right? That's manifesting itself through that person's body. And it's the same thing what we're doing here. We're infusing, we're incarnate, incarnating spirit into a body of work, into an image, into an object. And so we have to be able to really become, be able to discern that energy. Um, and so it's, it's interesting. We spent four weeks so far on this stuff and we have never talked about how to copy what you see. And we won't. <laughs> That's a drawing class. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So let's look at the energy here. There it is. Now you take that explosion and you lay it against all of those verticals and those little horizontals that brought you in you have a pretty powerful composition. 
And that could be for anything. It doesn't have to just be boy, you know, two boys uh, painting a, a, a fence. <clears throat> Imagine an arm coming through here holding a flower and the girl's like, oh, with her little fingers coming up, oh, you know, whatever. And uh, <laughs> I'm acting it out for you guys. <laughs> All right, so let's do another example. Okay, we'll do two more examples. Donna. Oh, Donna. I'm here, I'm here. All right. And Felicia, can you? Can you have, can you draw on your screen? Yeah. Cool. So, Donna, I want you to find, Delicia, I want you to find the, 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 the rectangle that creates a space that then inside of it, you're going to find the, the parallel lines that are repeated uh, of the little, black boy and girl with the cat, okay? And Donna, I'm gonna give you a hard one. You're gonna do the white kids. And it's hard because there's actually two boxes, not one. Okay, so we got the right kids on the right and the little, uh, uh, black children on the left. So you want me to do the right side? Yeah, the white kids. <laughs> okay. All right. So you want me? To, is that what you want me to do to kind of just uh, do the masses, the uh, staging? Yeah. Let, let's use. Um, oh, uh, sorry, arrow. No, 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 no. First of all, <clears throat> I'm going to erase that. Delicia, are those your purple lines? No, that was me. Okay. You want you want a white, right? Yeah, I want white, and I also want um, straight lines. Okay, use your straight line tool, not your curve tool. No, no, no. Under draw, you have like draw. It has a curly, like a curve. I. Yeah. Right next to it. That kind of thing. No, I want you to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There, you there you are. Where do you find the color? It's under format. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. You want to find Okay. Now, Donna, I want yeah. you to look up, look at the children, not, not the, mm -hmm. not, not the. Uh, not the image. Yeah, not the uh, truck behind them. Oh, uh, oh, uh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm all confused. Huh. All right, so you want me to figure out the, the field that the children are in that is particular to them? Like yes. In straight lines. Yes, now let me ask you this. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, that's okay. Well, let's start with this, okay? Let, let right. I'm gonna keeps breaking up. I'm gonna erase your line here, Delisha, because it's not coming out okay. proper. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah. Delisha, when you look at the kids in that area, in one line, primarily, what direction are they moving in? Draw. Uh -huh. I don't necessarily just look at the form of the of the image. Feel that area. Feel the force. Like, like when you look in that area of the image, how how is it moving? Oh, this guy like that. TV. There you go. There you go. And then I should. No, 
You guys are always connecting eyeballs. People don't do that. <laughs> connect energy, big, large movement, not eyeballs. All right. Um, that idea. <laughs> Just look at, okay, let's do this. Let's focus on Donna real quick, and then we'll take some time with you to do this, okay? Any of this right, DV? So far, you're looking good, girl. Okay. Now, let me ask you, Donna. Yeah. Good. I like that. Um, I'm going to erase this line here, even though that's correct in terms of a, a right diagonal, uh, but but we want to go parallel lines and we want to look for those really strong movements, thrusts. So what you're doing is, 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 is what I wanted you to do in the sense that the two little kids, the two little white kids are leaning forward, okay? The big brother, is leaning where? A little backwards. Yeah. He, whoa, what the hell in the neighborhood? Yeah. Right? The other guys right. aren't from that general. They're just a little younger, which makes them a little more open. And they're leaning forward like, huh, this is interesting at the moment. Um, <clears throat> now, <laughs> That's why that, that, that's a very interesting dynamic because you really have two overlaying boxes, two very different energies. And I like how the dog is kind of like a combination of both. <laughs> um, so that's good there, uh, Donna. Well, let me put that little doggy in. Okay. <laughs> and now if you look at that dog, I can pull out probably another five parallel lines. And that's kind of really the point of this exercise is that <clears throat> you really want, you know, you're just not drawing one, one line, but you're really honing that thing in and pulling it down through the shoelaces, uh, the back of the dog, uh, the, the head of the dog. Okay, you're, put, you're finding all of these little adjustments because all those little edges help move the eye. It reinforces, it gives stability to that thought. Okay, um, so here, the number one, he could have made that a 53, but he didn't make it a 53, he made number one. Why? To help with the uh, pulling of, of our eye in this direction, okay? all of these little movements. Even this actually comes down into this. Okay. Uh, down through the ear. All those little thrusts. Okay. <clears throat> I like how the numbers are on an angle, same angle. You find the boy's nose, you know, part of, to help us kind of just push us back, okay? Yeah. Um, so here, Delosha, let's look at, now there's other, other, other parallel lines, okay? Are they in a war? Okay. Right? No, they're, they're, this is a very, actually very calm, peaceful moment, right? Um, a lot of horizontals are, of flooding this piece. What am I looking at horizontals? <laughs> You're gonna look at the black boy and a black girl right here, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm just, but am I I'm looking just, at horizontals or? or um... No, you're, you're gonna, you tell me, when you look at them, okay, don't look at the image, just look in this area at them. If you forget that they exist, meaning like forget what they are, forget about their image. What when you look at that area and you and you forget about what the what you're looking at and you're just feeling that area. What is the diagonal? Oh shit, I gave it away. What is <laughs> what is the the 
angle that you're moving in. I'm lost in diagonals. Well, look for their body language. I think that, that kind of helps. There you go. There it is. Okay. So now that, so that they're moving in that type of uh, direction. Okay. And the reason why I say look for the box is because the box is going to give you the outside perimeter of, of this, of, of these thrusts. So um, you have this big one here coming through here, which is then mimicked down through here. Do you feel that? Mm. Okay. Mm. They're in their own space. You're looking for that space that they're filling. And then inside of it, you're going to repeat in parallel that energy. Okay. So over here, you have this little boy in one box. And then you have this boy and this little girl in another box, they're leaning in. I like how he brings that arabesque of the tire. He didn't need to put a tire there. He could have moved it back a little further, this or that. But it's important that that curve <laughs> brings us over because what does that curve allow us to do? It allows us to feel that we're looking up and over the, the boy in the front, his shoulder, looking past him, right? Like, oh, what's that? That's curious. What? You know, is that a cat? You know, um, <clears throat> I like how the two boys are um, on that same level, which is very interesting. I also like how this horizontal goes through this boy's head, but then it gets stopped by a block. And I like how this horizontal goes above this boy's head. To me, that's very significant. I mean, this 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 older brother, this thing's above his head. He don't know. He, he what's going on here? He's wanting to, to, to try to push through, but it gets blocked. Bam, it gets cut off. I find that very interesting. Would, the, would those sinister lines be of any meaning? Uh, that are going through, that Delicious right. putting in there? Absolutely. <sighs> so it's being repeated through here, through here, through here, mm -hmm. through here. We're not feeling that these that these two are like, hey, come on on, neighbors, right? <laughs> now, just to give some context, um, since half the people in this group are not from the United States, um, this was during the time, this was painted during the time where we started, you know, there was a lot of racial tension in the United States. And so this was Norman's commentary um, on basically people moving into the neighborhood, you know, like becoming more integrated, integrated society. So it's a very profound piece. It gets really profound when you get into the design because it, the design is telling you all of these ideas and thoughts that the, that the artist is thinking and why he wants you to stop here and why he wants you to start there and why is this moving there, you know? Um, and then when you interpret those things according to the design, it gets very, very deep. Now, let me see something. So now we're looking at a very interesting energy map. They're not, what's interesting is that these energies are not fighting each other, which is very, very important. There's no place where these, like even the boy, the negative, you know, who's like, what's going on here? It, 
this brings you down to here, okay? Which ultimately is that vertical line. So in their space, it's they're pretty calm, but at the same time, you got one energy that's kind of being pulled, like being pushed back, pulling back. The other two are looking forward. On this side, they're being pushed back because they don't know what to expect. You know, I mean, well, a few years later, they might have been hung in a tree or something. You know, so it, it's, it's very intense. But it's not violent, which I think is beautiful. And I think the you know Norman is saying it's okay to take a to take a pause and contemplate the possibilities and the ideas of who we are and this and that, but we don't have to to fight about it, you know. And uh, it's very interesting. So for me, it's interesting, you know, I see the beautiful painting, I see the images, but to me, this is what I see, and that tells me a lot more information than the images do. Yeah, it's really amazing, Victor. Mm -hmm. Ivy, what are your thoughts? I heard you humming. I think that was Ivy. <laughs> no, I'm here. Uh He's, I mean, if I wouldn't have seen this energy map, this one in front, definitely uh, that exact story I wouldn't have understood. Like, it gives totally different perspective and exactly what is happening. And especially that line, that uh, vertical line you drew, mm -hmm. that to demarcate it like, you know, two different worlds. But even then, there is no uh, hatred or violence. I mean, they're kids. They are like, you know, they, they, they're just curious to know what is happening rather than, you know, um, getting involved in any sort of, uh, you know, um, difference mm -hmm. what is existing around at that particular time. So uh, that uh, tells a totally different story. It's, it's beautiful. And I like <laughs> the, the little girl here through, the, through her cat. There's a, there's a moment of hope. Yeah. Where his, his with it through this boy, it, it shot down. You know, he, he's, he, he wants to give it a chance, but he's probably seeing what this boy is doing, his reaction. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's just very, very interesting. And, it, and it's just many layers of thought. That's why I call it composition, because just like in music, you listen to the great masters like Bach and Beethoven, they're composing that many layers of sound you listen to like you know i don't know reggaeton <laughs> it has like it's it's very weak music because it's just this repetitive uh sound that, that really doesn't have many layers of music to it and he like this fact also like you know how he balanced that there is that white cat and there is the color of the dog, black dog. And how it is totally balancing overall, yeah. it's amazing. It's the yin yang. Yeah, right, actually it is. <laughs> Interesting. Um. And today is Martin Luther King's, uh, I don't know, birthday? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. That's right. It's Martin Luther King Day today. That's wrong. Hmm. Yeah. I do like that. Um, okay. So let's move on from this one. And we'll end with this one. I love this one. And I want to end it because since we're all painted, almost all of you. Um, Victor, just one point. We didn't do the radiating line for the other one. Like, is there any... No, because we were doing repeating lines. Okay. Is there a radiating line? There may be, but I doubt it. I, I didn't. There's no. Oh, so there's not one in every picture then. No, 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 no. Okay. Tools that well, that helps use? me feel well, better. Okay. 
Because I couldn't um, see it. I was looking for I it. I was trying to figure that out. So I also couldn't see any. That's why I asked. So in this one, you'll have both. You'll have repeating lines and you'll have a radiating line. Okay. Um, this one's also kind of tricky in its, uh, in its um, radiating point as well. But Yeah. Uh, but I think the story in this is very, very cool. Ouch, my leg. So, Ivy, you got time to scribble? Yes, I can do that. I can. Okay. And let's see here. Who else is here? Um, Jen. Yes. You're a good scribbler. Come on. Okay. So in this one, actually, let me just work with Ivy on this one. Okay. All right. All right. Um, since we're really going to primarily focus on the repeating, uh, the repeating uh, primarily on the radiating point. Now, This is interesting because I would say that there's probably two radiating points in this one, a very small one and a very big one. So let's, let's shoot for the small one first. Where do you think this radiating point would be I can make a mark. Don't worry if it's small or big. You just find the radiating point, and I'll, then I'll tell you if it's a small one or a big one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I would uh, say this one, the you know, the tip of the brush where it is touching. Okay. One that is like you know, uh, is that the one? Uh, no. So the way you'll know it is you look at it and just look around it. Are there any lines coming to it? No, no. No, except for that one. Right. So you know that that's not it. Okay. Well, so erase it. Um, but it's close to that. So where where do you see several lines converging in one spot? Okay, one minute. Come on, Ivy. Uh, uh, my, I think this one, this point, but again. Uh, eh, there you are. That's it. Okay. That, that, that. That's the small one. And so what we're seeing in that, in that area, let me get, uh, is we see the vertical, I mean, this, this diagonal coming through that point, obviously the painter stick thingamajiggy, yeah. um, paintbrush is coming through there. The eyebrow is coming through there. Um, you know, one thing I kind of like doing on the computer is just taking from that point and swinging it around and you kind of get a, a real good sense real quick of how many little alignments there really are. You know, these little marks here, here's one. Okay. Here's one, here's one. Maybe through the nose to the side of the mouth actually going all the way down through the shoulders, one. Look at that. There's the edge there, the point there. Boom. So basically, the construction of that painting comes into that little mark. Now I'm going to say that's a small radiating point. 
but I do feel that there is one that's actually much bigger to the piece. Where would you guess that would be? <clears throat> Not his knee. Sorry. Uh, is Terry, uh, shall I say that? His knee? No, it's not, it's not his knee. No, uh, I was thinking like, you know, above, just above her, sh uh, his shoulder, the artist's uh, shoulder. Okay. Which, Put it like, in there. Sorry? Put it in there. Put the mark in there. Yeah, okay. It's not the knee, uh, the Lisha, because ultimately it makes no sense. Here, like, you know, somewhere here, like, like, you know, their view, their eyes are all uh, crossing that area and going towards Okay, the so you're in the right area. Mm -hmm. Now, you said the key word. What's crossing that area? He's an Ivy, what did you say that, that, that was crossing that area? Their views, but where the other people, their okay. eyes, like, you know? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, therefore, I'm going to say, which kind of, I'm going to say that that spot is right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yes. Because they're seeing through the artist's eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, start from that point and start radiating out and finding. Uh, the diagonals that are coming into that area, okay? See the guy's hands, you know. When you find a little area like this guy's face, hmm. you start to just run a whole bunch and you realize that his entire face has nothing to do with us showing that he's happy, which he is, but it's designed in such a way that it connects us, even his ponytail. Why is it hanging down his back? It's not hanging down his back. Our eye runs right through it, mm -hmm. right through her and right through the artist's eye. You know, it's funny. I didn't know, I didn't know artists use those sticks <laughs> when I was a kid, right? Until I saw this painting years ago when I was like a kid. I was like, what, 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 what is, what is that thing? I was like, oh my goodness. And so I made one for myself. <laughs> it's a mall stick. A mall picture. stick. I just call it the artist. Stick. <laughs> the mm -hmm. mall stick. Um, keep keep uh, going there, Ivy. Okay. Because you're going to see that if this is important, that we see through the artist's eyes, then we need to make it so clear that uh, we're going to need to run a lot of diagonals to it. And so now when you're composing an image and there's something important in that image that needs to be, you know, you need to bring everyone's attention to, you know how to do that. This is the technique that you would use. And so everybody, and I love this, everybody is looking, trying to look through his eyes and then he's focused on that little point. So what's important to him is not what's important to them. Even that eye. Is this the one could be the eye from the? Yeah, just keep just keep bringing. Okay. <clears throat> Here, I'll help you. Just so you can move quicker. See, I mean, you you'll notice how this thing ends here. It comes through this little mark mm -hmm. in his pants, and it ends on that little point where the light hits the dark uh, and creates that line of the lake, okay? Um, 
start to see these little things shift. And with this, you don't need to be super, super accurate. You're just kind of pushing it in um, into that area. <clears throat> Now, there we are. That's a really cool energy. Yeah. Hmm. Now, let me walk you guys through one last energy in this painting, which I think is really fun. Good job, Ivy. I'm going to get rid of this. Now, we do see all of these horizontals coming through here, okay? A lot of horizontals coming through here. <clears throat> uh, this angle brings us up through here. The men are cut off to the side. I'll probably create some type of um, reciprocal, but we'll get into that in two weeks from now, the next beginning. Um, <clears throat> we see these verticals coming through here. Okay, I'm feeling this energy. She is really into this. <laughs> She's like, Ooh. Right? Maybe that's her. Her. Uh, oh, you know, it might be interesting. This guy here, who's in the black, looks like he might be the guy who's purchasing the painting, and then this might be the father-in-law and the the wife and, and son or whatever it might be, right? But. What I want to show you is I was asking myself, well, why does he have this really strong horizontal here? It didn't make sense to me at first. And then you feel the strong horizontal coming through here. Actually, I like how it, how it, how it, how it's actually broken a little bit. Let me, let me show you guys here. It's actually kind of cool. At first I was thinking, well, this is like a juvenile thing. Why in the heck did he break that paintbrush? But it gives you movement, which is interesting. Yeah, there's this little fine tuning of the, of the brush. Um, <clears throat> but you have these horizontals coming through here. And when it gets to this point, it then comes down. And then this is being repeated. Okay. So let me go ahead. Oh, and we also have the horizontal and the bench coming through, okay? Let me get rid of these verticals so they're not so confusing. And her. I might get rid of this here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'll try one more time. I can do it. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to get rid of this one at the bottom here. So we have these horizontals coming through and then we have this diagonal. Now I want everybody to imagine you're finishing a painting. Okay, I want your hands to go up, pretend you're holding a paintbrush. And you have to, you're finishing a painting and you only have to put in one mark, not, not five marks, Jen, one mark to complete it. 
do it. I want to see you all doing it right now. How does your body move? One last mark for it to be done. Julia, I got to see your hands, though. <laughs> Imagine one mark and then it's done. You approach the canvas and you're gonna put that last mark on it. Like you're gonna dot an I. Yeah. If the last mark is a dot. Well, Normally, it's not a dot, it's a stroke. Oh, just like a stroke down. So if it's a last mark, you're going to come in straight with a little bit of, you know, like focus, slow. And then when it's right, you're going to go like this. Boom. Right. And mm -hmm. that's the energy of that piece. Wow. Would you, say, would you say there's some pressure uh, yes. on his back to get it, to get, to get it right? Well, like pressure of like you know, this you can tell here that this is what he does, right? He sells these things, right? So he's making the sale. He's making the, uh, you know, yeah. He has that pressure on his back, okay? But he's intense. He's focused. He's just putting that last mark in. Bam! It's done. Right. And, and that's the the sense, the, the self awareness that you have to have to be able to know what it feels like to put a last mark in a painting. To be so conscious of, of how your body moves, how that moves, because that's energy. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to translate it into line. That's what makes it such a dynamic and cool piece. Victor, does their, di uh, the people behind him, their diagonal action, does that, that sort of makes me feel like they're, emotionally helping him make that last stroke. Oh, yeah. They're like, okay, do it. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that's true. They're very supportive. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, like you can do, like they're almost a cheerleader. Like, you know, like. Yeah. Don Victor. Yeah. Don't you think uh, Norman Rockwell is um, a bit like Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's an incredible storyteller. Yeah. And, a and, 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 and human drama yeah. and uh, subtleties of human expression and all of that. It's amazing. Now, let me share. Um, let me get this uh, up here. I'll share. One thing you can do is uh, say Rockwell. Um, Let me let me share this here. I'm gonna stop sharing this screen, and then we'll wrap it up here. If you go in, you look at his models. Um, but I don't want you to look at his models. You see Rockwell here? Yep. You see the energy here? <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> and look at like he puts because he wants to get the angles and the and the energy right. He puts books and blocks under people's feet so wow. that they can actually stand there. Whoa! And, and and when you read his book, he tells you like he's showing the people. Look at the expression on his face. He's telling them how to look. Like I, he's acting it out. Right. He's just not like oh, it's a neat little idea, you know. He's telling these guys. He used to tell them uh, to keep their eyes like wide open, you know, so because he wanted to get more space between the eyebrows and the eyes because wow. it, it added more expression to the, to the, to the things. Um, you know, he was all about doing this one off. Oh, wait, no, look at all the studies. <laughs> well, that's so neat. Um, he, it took him a very long time to use a photographer 
because uh, he was a traditionalist. He had to draw everything, and that was cheating. And he ultimately came to a point where he compromised. Um, he made a he he, he compromised him and. Basically, he would never just use one photo that helped him feel that he wasn't cheating. He still had to compose and design these things. Uh, mm -hmm. So he took multiple photos. Um, and, uh, and so he found a system that worked mm -hmm. for him. I'm trying to look for some others here. <clears throat> uh, but he was a very, you know, <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> Look at that. Those lines, hey. Yeah, I can see them. You can see the radiating lines in that photo. Yeah. Yes. And so then when he goes and he, he, he sets that up, takes the photo, and then when he's designing, he's drawing, then he becomes intentional about it, super intentional about it. Because that's what the designer and the composer is doing. You know, here. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> yeah, that is great. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I was looking at that artist, Eugene Zampighi. He's an Italian artist. Also a lot of character in their stories. Hmm. That's bad. I mean, this is an Abraqua, but I'm just looking at it and this beautiful design. I love how, you know, she's so vertical. There's a little bit of an angle on this one, a huge angle on this one. And I'm sure if in real life, if these three guys were standing there, they all would have had their images, you know, laid out vertically horizontally you know like hey look at my picture but the photographer said no 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 no. i want to tell a story here i want to move i want to compose this piece and so i'm almost 100 percent certain that he told this guy hey angle your picture <laughs> and because yeah. this it's not a this picture is not about their pictures it's about the movement of these paintings out of this building or wherever it is, you know? Um, hey, look what I found. Hey, look what I found, right? Forgot. Uh, <laughs> so this is, <clears throat> now he's an illustrator, he's acting these things out, but if you really wanna, if you really wanna become self-aware of all of these little nuances, expressions, stories, energies, um, when you're when you're creating your work if you don't then it's just going to really become very stale and 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 you're, you're going to lose, lose the humanity in it. and even if you do something like the mondrian you know that uh susan was playing around with um once we converted that just to the lines i don't know about you susan but that thing opened up that painting in a whole nother realm and because everybody else is looking at the rectangles, but a rectangle is just a notional space of a diagonal. Right. And so it's really not about rectangles, it's about diagonals. And then values, which we'll get into in two weeks, but I like how uh, you use the values to, to discover the enclosures inside of a painting of a bunch of rectangles, which is pretty brilliant. All right, so let me give you your assignment and send you on your way. Um, so let me get back here. Okay. I can do this. Okay. So your assignment for this week or for this 
half a week, beginning of the week, is I want you to post five repeating lines, okay? And inside your images, look for two to four sets. You don't have to find every little object that has repeating lines. I want you to really think of it more in terms of finding big areas of space, okay? Um, like the verticals that Susan did and the horizontals that Jen did. And then the uh, really what inside the one Rockwell with the black kids and the white kids, it was really, we were looking at three areas of space. Okay. So pulling back uh, and then the two sets on the white kids. And then I want you to find five images of radiating lines. Now this is gonna be a little trickier because this one, when you're looking through the artwork, you're going to have to be able to perceive it before analyzing it. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that you're going to have to be able to read and then go back and actually draw on top of. And then what I want you to do is find one lesson out of all of the ones so far that you found was a challenge. And I want you to do five more of those just to kind of give yourself a little more exercise in that. So if you had a challenge with the arabesques, go do five arabesques. Very good. Okay. And then do your 60 to 90 second feedback video. That's it. <laughs> See you guys on Thursday then. Any last questions? Nope. All right, guys. That was cool. great. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you guys later. Okay. Bye. Mm-hmm.